Hi guys, welcome back to Back to Nature. I'm your host, Ria, and today we have a very special guest with us today, um, Dr. Piper Grant. And because of Corona, we're actually doing social distancing, so she will be joining us via Zoom. And we've actually sent her a bunch of essential oils, so like all of our other interviews, we will be challenging her sense of smell, and she will have to guess what essential oils what based on the clues I give her. So I'm really excited. Welcoming Dr. Piper Grant, also founder of Numi Wellness. Hi everybody, today I'm with a very special guest. Um, I'm here with Dr. Piper, founder of Mew Wellness. Piper, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you specialize in? Yes, hi Ria, thank you for having me today. Yes, so my name is Dr. Piper. I am founder of a practice called Numi Wellness. Mm -hmm. I am a licensed clinical psychologist um, within that space. I work primarily with individuals and couples, sometimes families, but primarily okay. individuals and couples on issues related to relationships, intimacy, trauma, and everything that can come in between that, including family issues. Okay. Um, so I work both uh, in private practice, face-to-face, -face, online, do intensive work. It's, it's fun. All right, so I think the question a lot of, people mind, uh, a lot of people's mind is, um, with corona, um, there's a lot of self-isolation going. So how are you dealing with self-isolation at the moment? Well, I think for myself, as for most people that I see, that is a moment to moment thing. And, okay. you know, I laugh because I can wake up in the morning and I can say, oh my goodness, this is, you know, this is going to be a good day. Look mm -hmm. how sunny it is. We've got activities planned. We can go outside. And then maybe by 6 p.m. I'm exhausted and I feel overwhelmed or done with it. Um, so, you know, in terms of dealing with it, I think it's a, it's, it's moment to moment and it changes in being okay with that. I am a mom, I have two little, little ones at home. And I know for parents right now, it's a very different experience for people who are single. Yeah, who exactly. are also for people who are in coupleship. Um, so it, it's, it has its very rough moments and it's also really weird time for us. Yeah, it is. And there's so much unknown, yeah. you know, and I think there's fear in that yes. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100%. 100%. The fear, I think, of the unknown because we have this is unprecedented, right? So yeah. we don't know anything. Like, what does this look like in the end? Right. Is, it, is there forever change? Do we go back to our normal, whatever that was? Yeah. And uh, so it's just trying to roll with the punches and stay hopeful. And also, though, I'm a firm believer of allowing the emotion to come and being okay with whatever emotion that, that is. So, okay. so that's a really good tip. So being okay with feeling whatever you're feeling and just writing it out? 100%. I mean, there's, I think, this supercharge of positivity. Actually, there's a there's a psychological term called toxic positivity, mm -hmm. which is like when somebody um, or people are so overly positive that it actually becomes shaming to other people. And so uh, I think from a, a therapeutic standpoint, what I really like to encourage, yeah, is just ride the feeling, be okay with them, know that this too will pass. Mm -hmm. And um, whatever feeling you're having is completely okay, whether that's panic, anxiety, joy, mm -hmm. relief, um, fear. And it will probably, for most people I'm seeing, it, it waxes and wanes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. All right, so first challenge, are you ready? Oh, yes. Okay, oil number one. The clues are, it's a good antiseptic, it helps relieve anxiety and stress, and it helps boost the immune system, and it helps keep skin clear. Okay, so I'm gonna say tea tree oil before I open it, but are right. any of these a blend? No, not until the last one. The last one okay. will be a blend. Okay, I think, ooh, but it kind of sounds, it's a sound. It sounds, it has a sound. <laughs> Is that tangerine or is that tea tree? I was so firm that that was going to be tea tree. It's close, like a family of, like you know, tangerine, kind of a family. Is it lemon? Is it like a citrus? Like a lemon? Yeah, it's a citrus, but not lemon. No. You should have it for breakfast. What is it? Like Americans are a big I believer in having it for it's breakfast. Not, is it, so is it orange? No, a friend of the orange or a family of the orange. Family of the orange and the lemon. Yeah. And you usually have it for but breakfast. Not and not tangerine. No, and you usually eat it for breakfast. If you're on a diet, usually in America, I think, when I watch the TV shows. 
Girl, I don't know what that is. I'm not good. The color of the fruit is pink. Okay. Oh, grapefruit. Yes. Hello. Yes. Oh, I don't have this oil. That's awesome. So you can keep that. I was just to say, do I have to send these back to you? No. I'm going to write this down on the label just so everybody sees. See, it just says number one. Okay. No idea. Okay. This is grapefruit. Okay. Cool. And this is good for antiseptic, you said? Yeah. And it also helps boost the immune system. Yeah, so okay. you can put it in the diffuser. Are you a theme to these oils today? Like, are they all immune boosting and stuff? No, there is not a theme. It was at random. See, I'm trying to, ca I'm trying to hack the code. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now I've got grapefruit all over me, so we'll see how we do when we get to the next one. Right. That was fun. Okay. So, Back third question. Um, what are things that people are um, starting to experience during this prolonged self-isolation? So, it's interesting. I, I, in, in my work mm -hmm. with people, what I saw in the beginning was this immense fear. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some people would say that there was panic. But, yeah. you know, it's like concerns, let's say it's on the spec, it's on a spectrum. So everything from concerns to panic. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and also though people were really like, I just felt like people were really hunkering in, really, mm -hmm. really hunkering in. Then I saw an alleviate, like some people just kind of that alleviated and they're yeah. like, okay, I'm okay. I'm doing fine. You know, this is what it is. And now what I'm seeing is people are a little bit exhausted by it. I, yeah. I don't know how else to put it other than exhausted. They're just feeling a little bit uh, and blah yeah. and um, kind of wondering what the end is. Yeah. What is like, do we even have an end to this? What am I looking towards? How many months is this? You know, when do I get to return to see my family? Uh, and so I think that a lot of people are dealing with, yeah, just exhaustion from being in this. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are dealing with uh, and, and, and experiencing grief. Yeah, there's incredible loss for this for people. It's it's a com it's a comp it's what we would call complex grief. Yeah. So we're seeing loss of jobs, loss of financial security, loss of health security, loss of relationship time, loss of social um, interaction, loss of knowing what the future holds, yeah. loss of alone time. So many things, and so there's a lot of grief that people are experiencing. And at the same time, you have a number of people who else are really able to use this time to go in and be creative and do a lot of self restructuring mm -hmm. or business restructuring. And, and also I think that's great for those people as well. So I'm working out and yeah. all of that stuff. So it's a really person by person situation mm -hmm. and family structure by family structure situation. Yeah. And again, though, what I'll say is even in that people that are feeling like they're really enjoying themselves, it does have it up. It's ups and downs yeah. for everybody. So I guess riding the wave, Riding the wave. Yeah. And who knows where that wave is going? We don't even know where the beach is, where the wave is going to crash. Right. right. Whatever. And I think, yeah, here. that also, like I said, it just brings so much different fears and unknown and, you know, not knowing is hard as well. Totally. Not knowing is hard. And, and, and the thing is, is, you know, for people around the world, we're also talking to people around the world, right? So some people have got better data reporting in their country and yeah. their countries or their, their communities are, are, really taking strong action other people maybe their countries aren't taking us such strong action or their communities aren't really taking such strong action so that adds to it as well about like kind of what's going on around you yeah. and helping you feel safe or okay or supported so during this time um you know like i always call it, you have like a lot of chatter in your mind like a lot of them might be negative so how what would your tips be on dealing with this like chatter in your mind and how you know making sure the negative emotions are not like taking over or impacting you, you know, in such a way because, you know, these in the end of the day, they're, they're thoughts and their emotions, so they can be mm -hmm. not rational, you know, so there's a lot of totally. that going on. So what would your tips be in order to keep like a clear head space, a clear mind space in dealing with this? Use some essential oil, <laughs> definitely, you know, no, for real though. Yeah? I mean, I have your guys' deep calming in a roller, you know that, because yeah. it's like, Sometimes I just gotta put that over myself like holy water sometimes. Um, yeah, I'm diffusing at home all the time just to keep them calm, yeah. keep the nerves calm. Yeah, and the diffuser, all of it. And, I mean, but you know, and I don't mean that as a plug, I really actually genuinely mean that as helping create an environment for yourself amongst all of this chaos mm -hmm. and unknown 
that feels like it's controlled and safe and secure for you. So like a routine so would help, my, right? Sorry? Like keeping, keeping a, routine, a routine, you know? Yes, keeping a routine. You know, and it's interesting because when you say that, and like even when you were asking the question, it's like there's negative chatter about fears and stuff. And also I have to stretch that in, in that people are also experiencing a lot of chatter about how they should be mm -hmm. during this time. Like I should be doing all of these things. I shouldn't be watching TV. I should be keeping a routine. I should be, you know, doing 25 activities with my kid a day. And that in itself is creating a lot of pressure. Yep. And so in that, if we can silence chatter by just moving the shoulds and like, if you're surviving and not thriving, that's totally good. Like okay. we just are in survival mode sometimes for some of us. And going, if you are experiencing the negative chatter, routines is good. Setting tasks for the day. And by the way, that doesn't have to be, you know, oriented towards big things. I mean, like take a shower, brush my teeth, cook lunch for myself. Like yeah. it can be very basic things that are happening. Um, using essential oils, making sure you sit in sunshine for some time, get off, <coughs> excuse me, um, make sure you get some time away from some screens. Mm -hmm. I know in my household, we've had an increase in screen time. Yeah, for sure. That's, again, yeah, totally okay. We all like need it and use it. I use it with my child because I'm like, I need some downtime as well. Um, and, and yet, we have to be really cognizant of what happens to us when we're just having a lot of screen time. So yeah. getting outside, or if you can't get outside, depending on where you are at, I know for myself, what I do sometimes is I, I know when the sunshine is coming through my window and I literally lay on a yoga mat on my floor inside with the sunshine coming through. So, you know, if you can open a window, if you have that opportunity, open a window, um, do some exercises inside if you can. Mm -hmm connect with people, talk with people, call them, FaceTime. I know I've been FaceTiming with a lot more people than I would in the past. You I know, know? And technology makes uh, it so easy, you know? Numbers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So stay connected to yourself, to others, create an environment that feels safe and secure, and, and do you, be independent of what all the shoulds are. Just yeah. focus and do you. Okay, so just take it step by step, like you said. And then just focus on, you know, small tasks. It doesn't have to be big. Yeah. Okay. And if there's chatter, that's okay. I think that's the other thing. Like, if I can just add to that is that we don't need to fight the, going back to the negative feelings thing of before. It's like, if you're in some fear and panic, then allow yourself to be in fear or negative chatter and give yourself some time to okay. do that. I'm going to allow myself to be in this. And I know that come... 1230, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to walk around my house or my yard or whatever and allow my brain to switch. And to I switch. think what you're saying there is the key, like allowing yourself to feel it, but then also knowing, okay, after this, I'm going to do something else. So not letting yourself wallow in that feeling. Yeah, definitely. All right, so the second challenge. Okay. So this essential oil boosts your immune system. It has antifungal and antiseptic properties, reduces hair loss, and helps uh, clear congestion and relieves coughs. See, and I just started coughing. So yeah. now again, I want to say this is tea tree. I feel like tea tree is going to be like my go-to oil all day. <laughs> that, that is, is my, my go-to go oil I have loss. in my bag. But hair loss, I feel, oh, is it going to be rosemary? Have a have smell. A smell. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like I need to guess them before I do it, but I just, I'm listening to the, the... Okay, no, that's tea tree. Yes. yes. I knew you'd get Yay! it. Yay! Yeah. I get a tea tree! <laughs> and that is like my favorite essential oil right now. I'm smelling it all the time because it has antiviral properties, so it's definitely my go-to. Yeah, and then you can put it in a diffuser, right? Yeah. And that'll, that'll help? Yeah. Okay. Again, I'm writing these down on here because they're like little treats for this interview. I love it. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to the fifth question, and I think this is a more difficult one because, I mean, at the moment we're seeing um, higher divorce rates, more domestic violence in the home, and I think because couples are spending more time together. So what can you recommend in keeping like a healthy relationship through these times of like prolonged isolation together? Okay, I 
first of all, I think this is a really important question, and yeah. I really want to thank you for highlighting the fact, like, not only is there are we seeing maybe increased uh, divorce rates and or seeking out divorce uh, support, mm -hmm. but like such as a divorce attorney and, and yeah. researching that. But also recognizing increases in domestic violence. And we do really need to notice that there is a significant number of people around the world who are having to be um, held up in their household. That makes it sound like hostage, but you know, are, are stuck in their houses in unsafe environments. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I think that's a complex question because when we're talking about somebody who's in a domestic violence situation, it's going to look very different than a couple that is just dealing with like being annoyed that their partner isn't doing yeah. the dishes. Very, yeah. very different. You know, if somebody is in a domestic violence relationship, I 100% say, and again, we're talking worldwide, so obviously it looks different no matter where, where you are. It looks different wherever you are in the world, mm -hmm. but see if you can go find somebody else to stay with. Can you call a domestic hotline in your uh, place of country? There are people around the world who are offering um, shelters in their homes and places for victims of domestic violence right now to help them get out. So look on social media platforms, connect with people to do research for you if you feel unsafe doing your own research. But I just, I just kind of want to put that out there because I appreciate that you brought that up. On the spectrum though, again, like moving kind of away from that mm -hmm. part of just how to kind of deal with your day to day in a mm -hmm. couple is I think finding time by yourself. Yep. Finding time separate of coronavirus talk, mm -hmm. and how do we still connect as a couple in this? And so, what that might look like is finding time by yourself. You might be in a small studio apartment. I mean, we're not ta not everybody has the luxury of having yeah. space, right? That's and true. So, Especially in the city, um, you know. That might. Yeah, exactly. Like, but but I think the thing that we have to look at is like what's already available to you. Like when you take a shower, can you? Or by yourself and really take it in. I mean, I was joking the other day that I'd love to see how um, I'd love to see the rates of toilet time have increased because I swear I know couples are fighting right now about like you have been in that toilet for so <laughs> long because people are trying to get away from each other. Yeah. Like, that is literally what's happening. So you know, don't hog up the bathroom as much. But when you're in the shower, take that time and notice it's alone time. If you need to talk to your partner and say, hey. You know, I always say keep it as I. Like, don't put it by your partner. I'm not. Don't say I'm annoyed with you. I need space from you. But I'm really feeling like I need alone time. I'm really feeling like I need some space to reconnect to myself. I am really experiencing overwhelmed feeling, or I am feeling claustrophobic. I would really love some alone time. Help set the boundaries rather before getting in a fight, mm -hmm. rather than being reactionary. Yeah. And so. And so have a conversation with your partner when you guys are feeling really good, like, hey, you know, I'm thinking maybe we need to start scheduling like one hour quiet time in a day. And I'm going to go sit in that corner and you go sit in that corner. Like if that's what it is, you know, yeah. or I really need to schedule a half an hour by myself. If you have kids in the house, talk partner about can I go escape somewhere in the house and yeah. just sit for 30 minutes alone and do whatever you want to do. Um, the opposite of that though is like I said is have time together to foster intimacy so we're talking about alone time is really important yeah. so that you can reduce annoyance really connect with yourself and also though intimacy fostering intimacy is really important and so that you need the alone time to feel okay to be able to come back yeah. together but you also still need to come back together and things I've been recommending to my couples is like have fun and be creative how can you do things like do an art night together. Like, so you know like how there's those paint sip and see or paint sip and paint nights? Like yeah. create one for yourself. Like pull up a picture online, pour yourself some drinks and do it. Um, you know, I said like have a picnic in your house. It doesn't have to be nighttime. Like create a picnic somewhere else with space in your house and you guys make a dinner together. Put on music and dance. Do not watch a movie together. Do not watch a show together because everybody's doing that and all we need to do then is be quiet. But read out loud to each other, uh, play a game together. If, if talking is hard for you guys, like, a, you know, play a game, uh, but spend it and be, have it be Corona free time. Like let's not talk about coronavirus during this entire date time. Okay. That's uh, actually really helpful. Yeah. Okay. So challenge number three. Okay. Oh, tell me the D. 
Okay, so it helps um, fade scars. It also helps prevent skin from sagging. Um, it also helps with muscle pain and it helps balance hormones um, that cause PMS and it helps fight depression. Amazing oil! Like, hello, miracle oil. I don't know why I'm so stuck on tea tree. Um, yeah, nothing clove? I don't know. No, I think you'll like this one. Oh, rose, rose. This, the close, it's the poor man's rose. Rose geranium. Yes. Rose geranium? Yes, you're very good at this, yes. Ah, that's awesome. I actually thought I was really going to be, okay. Can you tell me the pro like what this is good for again? So, I'm going to have to remind myself. So, it helps fade scars, um, prevents uh -huh. skin from sagging, it helps with muscle pains, and it helps balance out hormones that cause PMS, and it also helps fight depression. Amazing. I did not know that about Rose during it. That's yeah. awesome. That's good to know. And it's also really good if you, um, for ticks, for dogs. Really? Yeah. Okay, again, why tea tree? Rose is rose geranium, kind of the, the miracle one. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so to a more personal question, you have two kids mm -hmm. of your own uh, and a newborn and a... I like how Scala puts it, a three-nager. How are you help? How yeah, are you? Nature. Yeah. Number one, helping them through this, and two, dealing with um, the stress of having to take care of your family in such a confined space. Ah, uh, it moves me when you actually ask me that question, which is probably telling about something. Um, I do. I have a five-month-old. She just turned five months yesterday, uh, and so having which I guess now she is out of the newborn phase, but when we all started this, she was still in the newborn phase. Yeah. So having a baby in this time is scary for me because, you know, for me, the greatest fear was not uh, her necessarily getting sick, but what happens if I need to seek other medical care and the medical care is compromised or overwhelmed or something of the sort. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of holding my baby tight and trying to stay healthy around that. For the three-nager, who turned three during this coronavirus time. Yep. You know, it's been interesting. She asked me one day when we were driving, she's like, mommy, where's coronavirus? Uh, other thing she asked me about was, you know, when people go to the hospital, then do they die? Um, and, and we don't talk about it necessarily a lot in front of her. But what I realized is that there was, we only, I will watch the news for 20 minutes mm -hmm. a day. There's one news show I watch just once a day. Uh, usually after she goes to bed, but if I don't catch it, sometimes I'll watch it the next morning. Mm -hmm. And what I realized is that she would overhear that or see it when we watch it just, I mean, literally three times, maybe maximum. Yeah. And uh, she picked it up. And so I know kids are asking questions. And so when we talk about how are we helping our children, it's having to be in conversation with them. They're maybe having their own fears and unknowns. My daughter... Her whole entire schedule has been uprooted. You know, she's like, where's my friends? Why don't I have any friends anymore? Um, or if she talks to them on FaceTime or, you know, WhatsApp, she's like, I'm in Bali, where are you? And they're like, I'm in Bali. And it's very like, why can't I see my friends? Uh, what? Why are we on holidays so long from school? Even yeah. though they, her play group does an online thing. Have. And infants love schedules. Schedules help them feel safe and have boundaries. So, you know, I think it's a really good question. It's about supporting them, being in conversation mm -hmm. with them, just like adults. They have their own worries. And having to be patient with her has been um, both learning to me and mm -hmm. challenging to me at the same time. And okay. sometimes I have to remember, you know, she's going through it just like we are. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. And then how am I taking care of my family? I think my partner and I do a really good job of being in communication with each other. We typically check in with each other um, at the beginning of every week. Usually Sunday, it's like, hey, what do we have going on this week? What do we have to do? And then every night after the kids go to bed, we do a very informal kind of like, OK, what do you have tomorrow? How can I support you? What do we have on our agenda? Um, and I think that helps us both feel good and in communication. And, and we are and then for taking care of my family, I think it's just because I have an amazing partner that we are really able to do it together. Okay. And honestly, it's been, for us, it's coming from good communication. We 
usually check in at the beginning of every week, usually like Sunday night, Monday morning. Hey, what do we have going on for the week? What do you need done? What do I need done? And then usually every night after the kids are in bed, we're just like, how can I support you tomorrow? What do you have? Because we're working from home too, yeah. right? A lot of people are working from home. So it's like, I needed quiet time right now for this interview. So I'm like, you got to watch the kids. Yeah. Uh, and he needed to work this morning. So I supported him in that. And and so it's it's finding support for each other so we can be a foundation for the family. And also when we both had our own freakouts, being there for each other, not judging each other around that, not getting activated by our partner, just being like, he's in his space, she's in her space, how can I be there and support you? And and knowing that we're gonna both have some feisty times, we've definitely had some feisty times and not judging each other for it. Like, I gotta be kind to myself, he's kind to himself, we're kind to each other. We know it's trying times and uh, we're just trying our hardest. Yeah. Survival. Survival. survival that's right, that's right. keep going keep back to that survival girl yeah yeah <laughs> so i think this is going back to like um tips from you on self-isolation how to stay sane um, and i think this goes more towards people who are single or doing this alone you know i'm so happy you're asking about single people yes okay let's talk about it yeah so what okay, would be tips the tips for self, yeah for so tips or like routines or like anything that you can suggest, you know, to keep them sane during this time, because I know being alone is quite hard, you know, we're very social creatures and having to be alone for so long can be really hard. Yeah, you know what, and again, I get like really excited when you ask about it, because I actually had somebody asking me about couples um, this week as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I said is like, let's also talk about single people. And we need to talk about people that are individuals, I guess I should put it like that, because yep. We all do have some people who are in their, fa they have families, mm -hmm. but they're isolating individuals. Yeah. So people are in self-isolation individually. Uh, and it is so important. So I'm so happy you're asking about that. It brings up a host of things, mm -hmm. right? It, it brings up, sometimes people are feeling um, relieved that yeah. they get to be by themselves. I have a close friend of mine who is laughing and joking that she didn't know her lifestyle was like a quarantine lifestyle <laughs> and she loves it. Like. She's like, I was made for this, like literally. And, and she's right, like she's a homebody. She doesn't she doesn't really need to go out. She's you and she likes to FaceTime her friends. She's mm -hmm. good being on social media and like connecting with people. Other people like myself, who's not really good with video calling, not, I love being social. I love hugging people. It would be harder for me to be by myself. Um, so for those people who it's harder for, yeah. Because for the people that they're doing great, I'm like power to you. You've been in training for a long time then. Uh, yeah. But for the people that it's harder for them, set dates for yourself to connect with people electronically. Do not let it pass by, but just choose a person a day. And I mean like even write it out, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm, and it doesn't have to be family. Choose an old friend. People are loving getting calls right now. I am on a group chat and I saw somebody uh, who was just having some feelings and, and not from a therapist standpoint, I did this. I, it was just from a friend standpoint. I was like, you know what, her and I, I don't even know if we ever really spoken on the phone. Yeah. And I just was like, I'm gonna pick up the phone and call her. So, and she was, she's single, she's in isolation by herself. So, you know, connect with people, be the one to forge that and connect with people, have some routine, choose some activities that maybe you wouldn't usually wanna do, mm -hmm. but like would challenge yourself. Yeah. Also puzzling is like really, really big right now. And I, and I mean that genuinely, I know a lot of people that are doing puzzles. I've recommended puzzles for a lot of my clients as well. It gives us a little boost of dopamine mm -hmm. and success when we like get pieces and we complete a puzzle and there's completion and you've got a goal. Like yeah. you know what you're working for. You can see it done. That, yeah. that does a lot for the human, human soul. Um, another thing actually I've said to a lot of people is do audio books. I know that sounds like maybe, or podcasts, something about hearing another human's mm -hmm. voice, you know, and maybe choose one that is like more conversational yeah. if you want to like kind of feel like you can engage in it. Mm -hmm. um, but just hearing other humans' voices that aren't like the news or yeah. something like that. So using, choosing lighthearted podcasts uh, or audiobooks is also like a really good option right now. And as I've been saying throughout this is like being in self-isolation by yourself can bring up a lot of feelings of aloneness, yeah. loneliness, abandonment. Mm -hmm. There can be jealousy. I've, I've seen some, or envy of people mm -hmm. who like are with their families or, or with a, a loved one. Yeah. And, um, and that's okay. Like that is, that is totally normal. And many people are experiencing that as well. Um, next question is people who are, let's say 
celebrating their birthday or any anniversaries or celebrations in general, like Easter, for example, they're unable to yeah. do that in a social setting. So can you maybe talk about that and what your opinions are or suggestions? Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you say that because also a lot of people have lost things that they've planned, right? Like yeah. I know people that have planned trips for their 40th and they've lost it. I know people that have had, to, I know multiple people who have had to cancel weddings or cancel trips to weddings uh, and the wedding had been canceled. So there is a lot of people who are losing chances to be social and together. Yeah. My birthday's coming up at the end of this month. And it was so interesting because I haven't really done something for my birthday in a long time other than just go out to dinner with my mm -hmm. partner. Not just, but other than going out to dinner with my partner. And I was like, this year, like end of last year, I was like, this next year, I'm gonna like do something, I'm gonna celebrate, I will have just had my second child. Like, and now <clears throat> that's not happening. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I I think it's again acknowledging it's just a loss it's a loss it's it we're gonna have more opportunities to come back together hopefully and be social you know have dinner i did a, a facetime I, I did a zoom like with family the other night i'm gonna do zoom and have dinner with family like so do do see how you can still stay connected and you can have fun with it yeah. Like, I, it's not going to be what we want. I know people that were like attending parties, like Zoom parties. Like, yeah. Like, everybody's just like drinking and putting on music and like playing the same playlist on Spotify. Netflix, you can come together and have a Netflix party and watch the same movie. Yeah. And, it'll and that's pretty cool. I haven't tried that. Yeah. So, like, yes, it's a loss. 100%. But now we're in a time where we have to learn to be dynamic in a different way. Yeah. And, and so it kind of sucks. But we got to find other ways to do it. Okay. So just shifting your expectations as well, right? Yeah. And also being okay with the fact that you feel disappointed. Like it is okay to be disappointed for okay. sure. All right. So moving on to the last challenge, this one is a blend. Mm -hmm. So okay. Ooh, the benefits, it helps clear skin, has detoxifying mm -hmm. properties and also aids digestion and helps improve memory. So have a smell. So it's not going to be clearing. It's, it's like a none of the blends that we sell, but it's um, oh, it's like a blend oh. of essential oil. This is a trick question then. <laughs> so it's three different essential oils. That's so weird. Uh, they're, uh, they're all, all like, like you can you cook can with all of them, them, you know, so they're like things you would find, find in your, your kitchen. kitchen. I mean, like, there's things that smell familiar to me. Just say them. I'll tell you if they're right or not. But I can't figure it out. That's the thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that smell. Is there lavender in here? No. But the, like, so in California, like you have lavender and then you have or like- Or lemongrass, is there lemongrass? Close, no. There is, uh, so you'll find it, how do I explain this? So the friend of lavender and usually they grow together, like in California you'll see them, like lavender and there's something else. <laughs> A yeah, and they use it for cooking, <laughs> usually roasting chicken is one of them. And remember Maybe? it helps, no. Rosemary, yes. rosemary, rosemary. Yes. There we go. Rosemary. Okay, that there. Rosemary. And another one. Is there citrus in here? Yes. Is there lemon? Yes. Oh, we're making a whole roasted dinner right now. Okay, rosemary and lemon. And the other one is usually used in tea. It helps with digestion and also you can find it in a lot of Asian and Chinese cuisine. So not close. It's a root. It's a rhizome. Nutmeg? No. Nutmeg's not a rhizome. It's, it's a root. Nut and nutmeg isn't a root. And it helps with digestion. If you have like a sore tummy, you would put this on your tummy. Oh, chap, 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 chap. No. Chap what? No, what is it? Kajaput, no, no. Um, usually it's an Asian cooking. It's a okay, root. It? It's not, it's a friend of turmeric. I, I'm not, oh, ginger. Yes. <laughs> Woo. I'm like, I'm not cooking, but I do make ginger tea. So. Yes. Oh, okay. So wait, I'm going to write that down. So it's ginger, lemon, and rosemary. Rosemary and lemon. Yum. That's like a delicious roasted chicken right there. Yeah. 
I think you've done really well with the oil, by the way. So good job on that Thank one. Thank you. So last question. So could you tell us anything exciting that you're working on now or you're going to plan to work on in the future? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it, yes, I'm going to put it out there. So for a number of years, I've been developing um, a few online courses and I just haven't gotten myself to get them online. Like I just, I, I use these materials and courses in intensive work that mm -hmm. I do with clients and they'll come and spend a weekend with me or a week with me and we work through courses that I've developed um, on various topics, but mm -hmm. I will not say the topic yet. Okay. Uh, so now just became an opportunity to be like, you know, kitten butt, kitten butt and just say, okay, I'm gonna get them online. So I'm hoping to release some of my online courses at a really competitive price for people, like at a discounted price than what people would do if mm -hmm. they came to see me. Um, and I also have a book that mm -hmm. I've been working on for a while, but I'm in consideration of maybe actually how to be creative with that and I'm, I'm feeling like we're obviously in a digital world but we're moving deeper into a digital yeah, world I think this has given us an opportunity to see how much we can do in the digital world and connect still in the digital world so I'm thinking about maybe taking my materials and instead of doing a traditional publication like do something online with it yeah um, like an ebook or so something you can have access to it yeah yeah so we'll see but that that Things are going on. I guess my materials that I've been working on and I've kind of been holding privately for a while and just sharing with clients in the room, I'm hoping to put digitally to share with more people. Oh, that's, oh, that's lovely. lovely. Thank you. There, it's so. out there. I hate universe, it's happening. <laughs> So thank you so much for today. And I'm going to link like your website and your details um, in the video below. So if people are interested, they can reach out to you. Awesome. Yeah. And my Instagram as well. Yep. Probably a really good place to connect with me as well. Yep. All right. So thank you so much thank for your you, time. Ria. And we will talk again soon, probably maybe when it's not quarantine, we'll have like a face to face interview, maybe. I like it. I like, can we do oils again or something? Yeah. Maybe we can do soaps or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So thank All you right. so, thank so, you much, so yeah. much. Have a good, have a good day. day. Bye. 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 So thank you so much, Piper, for joining us today. Um, it's been lovely talking to you, and thank you so much for giving us so much insight um, during this hard time for people and also tips, and that's been very helpful. If you guys have any questions, you can comment below. I'll also link her details so you can ask her, um, send her an email, also follow her on Instagram. Everything is um, linked below. Um, yeah, if you have any questions for me, or also you would like me to discuss any topics, please let me know, and I'll be happy to discuss them. If you like what you see, be sure to follow us on social media and don't forget to click the subscribe button on YouTube. Thank you for, guys for watching and we'll see you again next time.